In this video, we're going to take a look at how to construct and interpret an interval estimate for the population proportion and how to do interval estimation for the population proportion with the help of Excel. So in chapter 7, we saw that the sampling distribution of PBAR is approximately normal for large samples. And in this case, large samples means that n times p is at least 5 and n times 1 minus p is also at least 5. So in that case, p bar has an approximate normal distribution with a mean of p, which is the population proportion, and a variance of p times 1 minus p over n. So the confidence interval for the population proportion p will be p bar plus or minus a margin of error. And the margin of error in this case will be Z alpha over two, since P bar is approximately normal, times sigma P bar, which is the standard error for P bar. So the standard error for P bar, sigma P bar, would simply be the square root of P times one minus P over N, and we took that as the square root of the variance from the formula here. But since we don't have the population proportion P, we cannot make use of it in the formula to calculate the standard error. So that means we have to use the best estimate, which in this case will be the sample proportion P bar. And we end up with our confidence interval as P bar plus or minus Z alpha over two times the square root of P bar times 1 minus p bar divided by n. So p bar is our point estimator. Z alpha over 2 times the square root of p bar 1 minus p bar over n is the margin of error. And the square root of p bar times 1 minus p bar over n is the estimate of the standard error of p bar. So from the graph, we can see that the shaded area is where we expect to find our value of P with a certain confidence level. The lower limit of this area is P bar minus Z alpha over 2 times sigma P bar. And the upper limit is P bar plus Z alpha over 2 times sigma P bar. Now these Z values are the same values that we have encountered in the first video. And from these three commonly used confidence levels, we can see that the Z values are the same as what we've used in the first video. But please keep in mind that you should be able to find the Z value for any confidence level other than these three. The survey found that 397 of the female golfers felt they were treated fairly. Calculate a 95% confidence interval for P the proportion of female golfers who felt they were treated fairly. So we can see we have a sample of 902 of which 397 said they were treated fairly and we're interested in calculating a 95% confidence interval. So this means our confidence coefficient will be 0 0.95. So our interval is P bar plus or minus our margin of error. So our value of P bar will be 397, which are the number of female golfers who are treated fairly, divided by 902, our sample size. And we find that our value of P bar is 0 0.4401. Our level of significance is 0 0.05, which is one minus our confidence coefficient. So this means that alpha over two will be 0 0.025. So from the table, we see that our Z value will be 1.96. So we're going to replace all these into our formula and we are going to have our interval estimate as 0 0.4401 plus or minus 1.96 times the square root of 0 0.4401 times 1 minus 0 0.4401 divided by our sample of 902. And we end up with a margin of error of 0 
So our interval will be 0 0.4401 minus the margin of error and 0 .0, 0 0.4401 plus the margin of error. So we have a final interval of 0 0.4077 to 0 0.4077. So we are 95% confident that the proportion of female golfers who felt they were treated fairly is between 0 0.4077 and 0 0.4725. So in this case, our margin of error is 0 0.0324. So this means that our sampling error, which is the absolute difference between P and P bar, will be at most 0 0.0324. So 95% of the time, the sampling error will be 0 0.0324 or less. So we can also report this as the probability that the sample proportion will provide a sampling error of 0 0.0324 or less is equal to 0 0.95. So this result relates to the probability statement in video one. The interpretation of the confidence interval for the population proportion P remains exactly the same as how it's been explained in the first two videos, only that in this case we are interested in the population proportion and not the population mean. We can also make use of our inbuilt Excel functions to calculate our margin of error. So this would be equal norm.s.in and in brackets alpha over 2. And this first formula would give us our z alpha over 2 value, which is a percentile. And we'll multiply that by the square root of p bar, 1 minus p bar divided by n, which is the standard deviation of p bar in this case. So there's no explicit formula to calculate um, the margin of error for p bar, but you may consider using the confidence.norm function as explained in the first video and compare your result with what you would have gotten when you make use of these first formulas here. This concludes chapter 8.